At about 4 a.m. on 13 August 1991, Maureen Bunn awoke from a deep sleep to the sound of gunshots coming from the backyard of her housing complex, near Kingsboro. She went check on her children and they were sound asleep. Two Rikers Island Corrections officers, Robert Crossan and Rolando Neischer, were shot that night as they were sitting in a car outside of the Kingsboro Housing Project in Brooklyn, New York. Neischer died from five gunshot injuries. Crossan, who was shot in the hand, described the robbers as two light-skinned black men in their 20s. The next morning, when Maureen was making pancakes, Detective Louis Scarcella and his partners burst in and busted her son John Bunn. The interrogation was led by Louis Scarcella, and he threatened Bunn telling him that he was never coming home if he wouldn't tell Scarcella what he wanted to know. John said. He also told me that they already had beat up my co-defendant, that they had slammed his head into a wall and they already had him. The co-defendant Roshan Hargrave and John Bunn were never more than acquaintances. He only knew Hargrave from the block, but were now suspected of the same crime that they both knew nothing about. Bunn was darker-skinned and a short, slight-framed teenager at the time. Even though Crossan had described the carjackers as being light-skinned men in their 20s, he picked Bunn from the police lineup. Detective Louis Scarcella told Bunn it was his lucky day that he got picked, and since then he spent 27 years trying to prove his innocence. On August 17, Bunn was officially charged for robbery and murder. He was sent to the Spofford Detention Center in the Bronx which was closed in 2011 due to its notoriously poor conditions for detained youth. He waited 16 months for his trial that he believed would set him free. On the day of the trial, just four people took the stand. The first police officer to arrive at the scene, the medical examiner, a 77th precinct detective, and Crossan, the sole primary witness. Bunn and Hargrave were convicted by a jury after a trial that lasted just one day, despite having no physical evidence that linked them to the shooting outside the housing project. The truth didn't prevail. Bunn didn't have any chance to prove he was innocent. Bunn was first sentenced to 20 years to life and was later reduced to nine years to life as he was a minor. Bunn had a mild heart attack and fainted when hearing the sentence was passed upon him for a crime that he didn't commit. When Bunn was 17, he was transferred to an adult prison. He described the bus ride to the adult prison as one of the scariest feelings he had ever experienced. His emotions gradually transformed from fear to anger, which escalated throughout his sentence and became harder to control. He started throwing himself into violent situations. But over time Bunn didn't let the anger consume him. He began taking part in anger management classes. He did so well in them that he eventually became a qualified counselor himself, and he helped his fellow inmates who struggled with anger. In 2016, Bunn heroically stopped the attempted assault and rape of a prison counselor. To honor his efforts, the parole board released him that year. Bunn struggled when he was out on parole as he was disconnected from the world for so long. He couldn't find a job with his criminal record as a convicted murderer. He was suffering from PTSD and depression and was sent back to prison for another year in 2018 after he failed to report for a parole meeting. He was released in 2019. And in 2010, the Exoneration Initiative began looking into Bunn and Hargrave's convictions. The Exoneration Initiative is a pioneering not-for-profit organization that provides free legal assistance to wrongfully convicted people in New York. Around the same time, many of Detective Louis Scarcelli's cases were flagged for review. His convictions were being analyzed for misleading testimony, forced confessions, and tainted evidence. Fourteen of his homicide convictions had already been overturned. In 2014, when Hargrave had not been granted parole and remained behind bars, Judge Simpson overturned Hargrave's convictions and ordered a new trial. In November 2016, Justice Simpson vacated Bunn's convictions and ordered a new trial. In May 2018, after 27 years of wrongful conviction, the district attorney's office announced they would not retry Roshan Hargrave or John Bunn. They became the 12th and 13th men to be exonerated of convictions related to investigations by Detective Louis Scarcella. After 17 years in prison and 27 years fighting to clear his name, John Bunn broke down into tears and held hands with Judge Shandia Simpson when he was finally exonerated in 2018. Y'all convicted and had a wrong man in prison, and that y'all still have somebody that's on the loose that's right now that killed someone, and that family 
They're out there running free, and I didn't deserve any of that stuff that y'all did. Prior to his time in prison, Bun barely knew how to read or write anything. But with the determination to communicate through letters with his mother instead of having her spend all her money on long bus rides upstate to visit him, he started learning. By age 17, he had received his GED and could read and write fluently. Despite being locked up in prison, the power of reading washed away all his anger and freed his mind. In a letter to his mother, Bun wrote, They can lock my body, but they can't trap my mind. Meeting other young men struggling with illiteracy during his time in prison was the driving point that led him to found his literacy program after being exonerated. I don't know how I made it this far, but I believe I am here for a purpose, Bun said. He founded a nonprofit organization called A Voice for the Unheard.org. He aims to educate incarcerated youth and provide access to books to promote literacy. His organization runs book drives to refurbish prison libraries, including his old housing, Rikers Island. He also provides under-resourced communities with educational literature. Bun also works at juvenile prisons twice a week. He runs group sessions with incarcerated teenagers and started a book club for them as well. He also attends public schools to teach students about his cause. Bun encourages his students never to lose hope. Bun said, where I come from, we don't have too many role models. So my message is, if you don't have anybody to show you the way, you make your own way. Don't let that be the reason to discourage you from going forward.